Welcome back, Zarkay fans, to Nanoly the Dawn. I remain your host, Chad of Fury333, and this last match for tonight is going to be between Field Pass and Google Frog on Isle of Grief. Which can describe how I'm feeling right now, although admittedly, with the performances you solved, I feel far less grief. Let us begin! Field Us with Gunship, Plant, and Google Frog. Cloakybot Factory. Cloakbot Factory. Got rid of the slightly childish name. Also, Cloakbots, the ones that have been changed the most. They've gotten a lot of changes. So, yeah, now we have Glaive's Glaive. Rocco's Ronin, Warrior's Reaver, Zeus is Knight, Hammer is Sling, Scythe is Scythe, Gremlin is Gremlin, Phantom is... Oh wait, that was the Sharpshooter is Phantom. I like that. Spectre is Phantom. And Tick is now Imp. And Eraser is Iris. I like those names. Although, bearing in mind that Ronin is the plural of Ronin, so that might be a little confusing in the future. Anyhow, at least I don't have to worry about calling things Zeus's. <laughs> That was an odd setup. So they're, they're knights now. I can work with that. So, now that that's all been sorted... Oh, great. That's not good. Now that's all been sorted, I don't have to worry about stuff anymore. Things can be dealt with. Oh yeah, and these are still Banshees, right? No, they're Locusts! Gunship Plant has also had a lot of changes. The Gunship Plant now, Banshees are Locusts. Rapiers are Harpies. Blastwings are Blastwings. Blastwings are... Wait, no. That's Blastwing. That's... Well, there's Revenant now. The Brawler is Nimbus. The Gnat is the Gnat. The Trident is the Trident. The Crow is the Crow. The Valkyrie is the Karen. And the Vindicator is the Hercules. Uh, Locust and Harpy. That's the one I've got to remember the most. Are you still Wasp? I don't know if you are still Wasp. You are still Wasp. Okay. So, right off the bat, we have a bunch of Locusts coming in here. We have a swarm of Locusts. Plagues of Egypt coming in here onto Google Frog's base. Already get, taking care of a few of their metal extractors. This is a common start for Isle of Grief. No surprises there. And Google Frog, while they were somewhat prepared for it, they, I think, had, no, they weren't prepared for it. They had no pickets or anything. Their glaives managed to do a decent enough job at chasing away the locusts that it almost sounds like a good anti-plague strategy. Next time locusts come in, just take, just take large blades, put them on a stick, and start swinging them at the locusts. You might hit a few. Probably won't stop them. They'll probably still ravage your fields, but at least you'll be able to say you fought locusts with glaives. And you saw it work before. Right here. So anyway, at this point, Google Frog should be able to just counterattack pretty swiftly and effectively, and that's what exactly what they're trying to... No, that's what they're trying to do. Yes, it is. They're going in for a setup for a counterattack. Looks like they're assuming Fieldhouse is going to go to the northwest. A correct assumption at that. As Fieldhouse... I mean, Fieldless did manage to get a fair amount of damage dealt. And I don't know if they expect a counterattack, but it looks like they do. They they really do. They have radar and everything. So this is well known. Google Frog knows or has pretty much given away what's going on. And there is a Gremlin as well, just for the additional little bit of anti-air support. And that is perfect. Unfortunately for Google Frog, this Glaive over here is going to get stopped by a couple of Lotuses. But at least they know, to some extent, that there is going to be something over in the northwest and it is worth attacking. Even if they lack the firepower with which to do so. It also means they know that Philthos is more focused on the northwest, not so much focused on their main base, and that opens things up a little bit. I think Google Frog, yeah, it appears Google Frog is going to take advantage of Philthos focusing on the northwest, possibly at the expense of everything else. At the same time, though, Google Frog doesn't have as much of an economy because they did lose their early metal extractors. They haven't quite rebuilt from there. This conjurer here hasn't even started building up yet. It is now, but the point is... Google Frog didn't have as much metal to work with, whereas Fieldhoss has an excess of it. Or just about. They're, they have 400 or so metal. They're doing fine for right now, but obviously they're in a much better position than Google Frog. That's the important thing. But at this point, though, Google Frog managing to get set up a bit more strongly, getting a few more metal extractors here and there, and that's perfect. Also a bit of reclaim, because why not? The locusts are there. Take them out! Now, this is the big thing, though. There's not a whole lot fighting these glaives. This, this, lotus, this lotus has no chance. And everything's been locked down. I mean, the gremlins won't be able to get rid of the locusts. And the glaives, I'm not sure where they're going for the factory. I guess Google Frog figures they might have a chance, but hey. No, never mind. The glaives figure they might have a chance. The glaives are doing that on their own. They obviously should be targeting the metal extractors as they are. And while no real damage has been dealt over here to the, metal, to the factory, I mean, at half HP, but... It's either destroyed or it exists. It doesn't really matter in between. The way this game goes, you're not likely to deal with the level of damage needed to take out a factory like that. However, Google Frog did manage to at least turn that into a bit of an economic stability, because 
in the meantime, they were expanding, as you do. Which is good for Google Frog, not so good for Field Thoughts. Though Field Thoughts, again, they did have the Northwest, they do have the Northeast. They don't have this little Lowlands, which might have benefited them, but at the same time, more so by slowing down the Glaives on the Glaive Assault. Still, though, Field Thoughts, they've got a decent amount of control over the map, or at least not a whole lot of spots are threatened. They can easily plot stuff down. They have the Wasps coming in, which much more focused on defense than on economy. An interesting choice, but that's the way they're going. At any rate, given that, it looks like Felthas should be fine. Really, economically speaking, Felthas should be fine. They're going to set up a Caretaker, which should get all this reclaim done rapidly. I mean, partly it's also because they are accessing metal, so, you know, get that excess dealt with first. Then worry about everything else. But at this point, they actually should be fine. They have 17.5 build power just there alone, not even counting the, the Commander, which is currently in transit. But... Again, a lot of gremlins coming in, and that's still causing some problems. Because there isn't much of a ground force yet, the Cloakbot Factory will be that ground force, but for the time being, it looks like that's not going to be the priority. The priority is preparing the gunship plant, which doesn't use metal. That is a energy-only process. Still, though, the gunship plant is not building anything. Built us... At least, okay, they've got that Cloakbot fact Cloak Factory set up, but... Yeah, it's a bit of a problem. Set up the caretaker. Get something. Get you get make use of that metal somehow. Don't let it go to waste. Fieldas knows what they're doing. Of course, the wasp over in the northwest isn't building stuff up, and they could build up power plants just as a way of sinking metal and also getting more power. You never can never have enough energy. And that's indeed exactly what they're doing: setting up some tidal plants, which good efficient use of metal for energy. Not a whole lot of threats to that area likely anytime soon. And now with that set up, Field Thoughts should be able to reclaim all this field no problem. But at the same time, this force of Glaives and Gremlins coming in here basically can't be hit from the air, and while the Cloakbot Factory should be up in due time in a couple seconds, oh, 20-ish seconds? Hard to say, actually. Field Thoughts look like they're prioritizing this particular Wasp here, but even then, it shouldn't be too much. Regardless, that Cloakbot Factory needs to get up sooner rather than later if Field Thoughts wants to be able to save this base. Ah, their commander, that's why. What's their commander's build power right now? 17. That would make sense. However, not having built the Cloakbot Factory, that's putting Fieldthoss in a bit of a tight position because these Glaives can come in here and there's not a whole lot that can stop them. The Gremlins are going to be able to stop the, the Locusts. The Glaives should be able to get in and deal with everything else. Now they're... Now even with this defense coming in here... The main thing is because the Glaives coming in 2 or 3 per second and Google Frog is not sending in that many reinforcements... That does close off the main base as far as Google Frog is concerned. They don't want to risk it. It's enough soft pressure has been put on them. They don't need to lose their forces in the process. And that is the wise choice. Bit of a timing game there, but I'd say that was the wise choice. I, by, by timing game, I mean they might have been able to push in and deal some extra damage. But at this point, the soft pressure is dealt. The, the Reavers have been forced to be built. Then, you know, after that, Ronin could pop in. Or Scythes pop in. That works too. Ronin being, of course, what was originally called Brocco. I feel the need to clarify which is which when it comes to names for the time being, just because at this point, I don't know how clear it is that names are what they are. I don't know how clear it is, for instance, that Ronin is Rocco, or vice versa. Oh, hi, Floris. Yes, this chat is working. And Floris is working, is rooting for Alta Vista Toad, which presumably is... Google Frog, circa 1995. I don't know how many people would get that, but I'm pretty sure most of the 0k audience would. Man, I remember when Alta Vista was a thing. Barely. But it wasn't much of a thing. Much like this line of Lotus here, torn apart by a Thunderbird, leaving the commander completely open and filled us, losing their commander at the cost of all these glaives, though Google Frog did not pull the glaives away in time. That's a massive opening that's been left, so Google Frog could easily lose a lot of their base with a dozen or so Glaives coming in the other side. And Philthos, with this Raven... Oh, okay, the Thunderbird should be able to do much, because the Thunderbird was the main reason that that entire assault worked. But I'm still a bit surprised that there was a suicide assault there on the Commander. And not a bunch of Glaives that then retreated out of there before the Commander exploded, leaving only one or two to die. Like, bear in mind, that death is generally a bad idea. Just life tip, don't die. If possible. But 
that's clearly not possible for those glaives. And possibly also for Google Frog's base. But at this point, at the very least, the Northwest can be taken out a little bit. Oh. Okay, Scythe v. Scythe. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> oh, they don't know! They didn't know! Oh, with the Lotus is almost completely destroyed, or actually, yeah, pretty much completely destroyed. A couple of them are going to be built up again, but Failthos won't have enough to stop the Scythe by the time they get in, because each Scythe can take out one of these in four hits. Four, four Scythes can take one of them out in a cycle. And especially with the Wasp taking the damage it's taking, that next Lotus doesn't even get completed. And yeah, these Scythes, they're having no problems whatsoever. And again, nothing can really stop them. I'm not sure why the Trident was even sent over here. Now, regardless, that was a slightly unprotected way to commit suicide, though at the same time, Field Toss is having a field day in the southwest. That's the more important thing right now. Like, the northwest is a fair amount of damage. Google Frog is getting a few hits in, as is Field Toss. They're pretty much trading, as the economies haven't made too much of a difference. Hmm. That is bizarre. Regardless, though, it looks like it's going to be a pretty simple match. Wait, what am I saying it's a simple match? It's not a simple match at all. This hasn't been anything but a simple match. I am getting distracted by something. I don't even know what. But whatever it is, Google Frog has at least managed to get some slight economic advantage out of that whole exchange. And a lot of information out of that exchange. Now, bear in mind, Filthus does have a fair amount of units just plopped around the map to make sure they know exactly what's being built and to stop any expansions without any effort on Google Frog's part. But at the same time, Google Frog is just a kind of a strong position, but an odd position. These glaives, and instead of 13 glaives over in the south, they're still causing problems. I mean, it looks like the Thunderbird wants to do something about them. Or at least, well, buzz them a little bit, not actually hit them. I mean, the bigger story is the two Reavers over here, but even those aren't probably going to be able to get in here. And no, Field Test isn't... Oh, bear in mind, this is a replay. I should point out, this is, in fact, a replay. Their Floris is confused, I think. Anyway, the, I should probably point that out more often, that these are, generally speaking, replays that I'm casting. Not, not anything else. It's just, I don't know if that's always clear. Okay, it looks like we have Twitch chat sorted. And more importantly, Google Frog has actually started accessing quite a bit. And actually, well, if you look at everything here, Google Frog has managed to get rid of most of Philthos's armies. Like, one and a half times-ish more, almost two times more attrition. On top of the fact that air control is basically entirely theirs, this northwest side here, or north southeast side here, being cleared up. Kind of by accident, too, so it doesn't even necessarily give away Google Frog's intention to expand there. And Google Frog just wants to re-expand over here in the southwest. But of course, the problem being that Ronin coming up here means that Reavers have a bit of a harder time. Especially since this one's about to die. Yeah, overall, the this is a bit of a stalemate. The northwest has been taken, again, convincingly by Fieldhaus. Most of their forces focused on the northwest, which does mean Google Frog has a bit more room to play in the southeast and east, and possibly even northeast. Though, admittedly, the sheer amount of Lotuses on the field means that there's not much else to say. That being said, that's all there is. Lotuses and not much else. So this entire game is going to be coming down to a bunch of Lotuses off in the corner with no metal to protect. Versus Google Frog, who doesn't have as much, as much territory, but has just as much, actually more metal, set up. That being said, Field should be able to rebuild this shortly. Especially since their commander was still right here. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of bits here. 630-ish metal worth of bits. So right now, I mean, I'd kind of like to see Google Frog just throw down a Thunderbird right here on top of this force and let the Glaives have at it. That seems to me to be the way to go. But the question, of course, is where is that Thunderbird? The answer, right here! And, ooh, no, Phoenix is going to be the one going in, not the Thunderbird. Well, that'll be interesting. That won't do much. I mean, it'll slow, it'll soften things up a little bit, but Phoenixes don't deal enough damage to make it that worthwhile. One of the one or two of the Ronin are gonna die, but that's it. Actually, no, they're not. One of them's gonna live at one point seven. 
Okay, since when did Fraction Life Day exist? But it's gonna live at 1.7 HP! I did not realize there was non-integer HP in this game, but apparently there is. Okay, good to know. There is, in fact, in inter er, non-integer HP. Fractional HP is the thing. Oh, and he managed to get rid of that... Is that reason? Is that the point? I'm not sure what the target here is. Oh! Get rid of the trident in the air. Ah, but the thing is the Reaver is still down. The Glaive is having a having an easy time getting through here. The Reaver should be able to... No, five seconds. That's, that's too much time. And that's Google Frog likely being able to take this. I mean, Thunderbird did enough of a job that Google Frog was basically able to equalize the army. Because the army value here, that's 1,000 or so compared to... Well, let's discount the Trident here for a second. 2,000. So the army value is doubled, though admittedly... A lot of that is Ronin, which are pretty well hard countered by Glaives. Although at the same time, Field Toss has out-expanded Google Frog, and their economy is stronger. My Field Toss right now, what is, what are they looking at? No, what, what is this? Oh, that was weird. I, oh shoot, I just changed camera on myself. Why did I do that? No. Back to the or back to the Cool. So yeah, Google Frog just kind of changed themselves up. Where is that? Ah, also one. So the thing I'm curious about here is what exactly is going on with unit value. And it looks like Google Frog, Google Frog has the advantage of unit value right now. They've managed to kill more. They've kept more. And they're using a lot more metal, especially recently. Like, Field Toss, at this point, they're accessing quite heavily. They've exceeded Google Frog's excess. And their metal, their metal use is just going down, relative. There's not really a whole lot to say about that, except, well, it's going to be tough. What the? Oh, g oh. Spring, why did you crash? We are back, and we have the game back, roughly where it was. So let's get back. Except with vision, full vision. So anyway, where were we? Ah, yes, that was, okay, attempts in the Northwest, and Failtoss had just managed to get a bunch of economy, but at the same time, Google Frog going for loads and loads and loads of, well, hovercraft. Mostly flails, because anti-air is always good, and flails are awesome anti-air. And Google Frog, Glaive Army, not able to get through this yet, but of course, they're going to be sending in some Thunderbirds to, to disarm everything, and once that's disarmed, it should be fine. Good surprise the Glaives aren't going over here, though, but it looks like Failtoss doesn't matter, and... Oh, seriously? Seriously, the game crashes right before the GG. You have got to be kidding me. Well, anyway, that was that. That was actually a pretty good match. Except for the technical problems. And, of course, the continuing technical problems with Spring. So, yeah. Anyway, that was cool. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And that'll be it for me tonight. So, yeah. That's, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a good night, everyone. I should be able to do this next week.